Next, we move for connectivity and the types of joints. Right. Now, connectivity is very simple. It just means that suppose you have the two links, right? And suppose this one is the fixed link or the input link and this is the output link or this, this is the fixed link and this is the output link. So motion has to be transferred from here to here or from input to output. So we need to connect these two, right? So to connect these two, we need a joint, right? As we saw in the first slide that two links were connected by some joint. So we need a joint here in between these two links. So if that joint is connecting one of the link, then it will be this link will be the fixed link and there is a joint and this joint here is connecting one of this link then it will be having the connectivity as one and if this joint here is able to connect one link here and there may be one more link here then this will be connectivity two is that clear so the base link will be there or the input link will be there but how much other links that the joint can connect will give you the connectivity Right? So this is uh, about the connectivity degree of freedom we'll just uh, discuss. So this is the first type of joint which is known as the linear joint or the prismatic joint. Uh, these, they are, these are also called sliding joint. So you can see that uh, this is one of the links. This is the input link, right? And this is mm -hmm. the output link. And this is the joint. So this joint, yes. this angle is fixed. So this cannot rotate here but this can only slide up and down. So that's why this is known as the sliding joint or the prismatic joint. So the motion of this joint is only in one direction. That's why we say that degree of freedom is one. We'll talk about degree of freedom a little bit later. So we say that degree of freedom is one. So this joint will be the prismatic joint, which will be actually sliding up and down only. So it will have only one type of motion. Next we have revolute joint. So this revolute joint is basically you can see it is cylindrical in nature. This distance is fixed here, right? In the previous case, this angle was fixed and the distance was variable. But here the distance is fixed and the angle is variable. So this can twist around this axis. So this is the axis, right? This vertical axis, about this vertical axis, this output link can change this angle so this can uh, move or this can rotate about this axis right so this is the revolute joint now uh, revolute joint is basically a part of rotary joint right the rotary joints are basically two types one is uh, revolute and one is uh, twisting rotary uh, joints are basically revolute and twisting so twisting and what is the difference basically? So you can see this is the output link, right? This is the axis of the output link. And this is the axis about which the rotation is taking. So if these two are perpendicular, then it will be revolute. But suppose you have something like this. This is the axis. And this joint is actually moving about this axis only. Suppose there is a link here. So the output link is rotating about the, the axis of the output link and the axis of rotation are same. Then this will be twisting. This is represented by T and this is represented by R. So a little bit difference is there, but more or less now we use this word only, the volute word, right? but I just wanted to tell you what is the difference. So the difference is of this angle. If they are mm, same, the, if the, both the axes are same, then it will be twisting. And if the axes are perpendicular, then they will be, then it will be revolute joint. So again, the degree of freedom will be one because this can only have movement in one direction. This can only rotate about this axis. So this degree of freedom is one. But in case of cylindrical joint, we have degree of freedom as 2. Why? Because now this distance is also variable. So this cylindrical portion can move up and down and also this can rotate about this axis. So it will be having 
two degree of freedom it can have two motions up and down motion and this rotation about this z axis this is the hook joint so again uh, you can see and this can be the input link and this is the output link and you have this uh, two joints connected perpendicular to each other so this will be moving in this direction uh, rotating in this direction and this will be rotating in this direction this, this will be having left right movement this will be have having top down movement right uh, so this will be having two degrees of freedom it will be having two motions in perpendicular direction right one of the axis will be this and another axis will be this so this will be having again two degree of freedom this is generally not used in uh, uh, industrial robot or manipulator uh, or serial robot this is actually used in the uh, parallel robot we'll talk about serial and parallel robot again uh, so this is used generally in the parallel robot not in the serial robot next again we have this ball and socket joint or the spherical joint this you might have seen uh, you might be playing the video games so you might have seen use the joystick or in in now in modern day cars you have this side glass that side glass also has one stick and if you move the stick the glass is adjusted so it is similar to the joystick and it will be having degree of freedom as 3 so it can rotate in three directions so suppose this is x direction this is the um, this ball this socket this is the socket this is the link so this is the input link and this is the output link the ball the ball and this this rod or this stick this is the output link so this is the x axis this is the y axis and this is the z axis so you can move it in any of the direction so these directions are shown here suppose you have uh, two coordinate frames are shown here you can see the coordinate frames one is x y z and another is x1 y1 and z1 so one of the coordinate frame x y or x1 y1 z1 is movable that is this stick wall apart right so x1 y1 z1 first it will be rotated about the z axis so after rotation it will look like this after rotation this y axis will move from here to here and this x axis is moved from here to here next you can have the rotation about this x axis so after the rotation about this x axis z and y will be moving so y will be moving here and uh, z will be moving here x will be stationary here next we can have mm, uh, movement about uh, y axis so if this y, uh, y it is moving about the y axis then x y z this will be moving so this will be the final orientation with respect to the base frame x y z so we'll be dealing with all these things uh, i'll show you the animations and all and there is one software which is known as robo analyzer we will be doing all these things in the robo analyzer also so important thing is that uh, we have three degree of freedom in the spherical joint again this is not used in the serial robots or the manipulators they are basically used in the parallel robots so in industrial robots or the manipulators we generally use two types of joint the prismatic one and the revolute joint right so this is all about the joints then this is the representation of the joint a revolute joint is represented by this circle right and this is the representation of the revolute joint or the this is another type of representation of revolute joint which generally we represent it by like this then this is the representation of the prismatic joint and uh, this is the cylindrical joint right these arrows are also important right and uh, this is the spherical joint this is the hook joint there are two axes which are this is the twisting joint so these are just a representation we will be needing these representations and actually speaking these are more of bookish uh, symbols uh, we will be using few more symbols which are actually used in the industries so we'll discuss those things when we'll discuss the kinematic diagrams so initially so to do the kinematics analysis we need to draw the kinematic diagram of the robots so when we'll be doing that uh, we'll learn more about these symbols